This is just a really quick video showing off the new Samsung uh, TouchWiz UX running on the ASUS EPAD transformer. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my brightness here so you can see that it is indeed running on the ASUS transformer. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, the TouchWiz interface, it's really uh, Samsung's custom uh, user interface that they slap on in a lot of their uh, uh, Galaxy lines like the Galaxy Tab, um, the Galaxy phones and whatnot. Uh, you know, in the past, they've gotten a lot of bad criticism, I should say, uh, because it wasn't necessarily a good thing. But uh, for it's been totally revamped for uh, for Honeycomb, and so I was able to get the um, the ROM that was running on the Acer Iconia, uh, flash it on here, and flash the uh, you know regular kernel for the transformer and it actually booted and I was really surprised and actually thanks to one of the posts um, one of the members on XDA for pointing out that little trick so um, I'll put all the credits at the, at the bottom because I don't know the names or anything so let's go ahead and just kind of take a quick look at um, a touch was running on the ASUS transformer so down here you can see that the buttons have changed a little bit uh, we have your standard back uh, home this one for t multitasking and they're actually a dedicated screenshot button so this one here would actually be for screenshots so once you press it you get a little circle or a little uh, let's see if we can zoom into that uh, let's go ahead and take it again screen captured copy the clipboard so yeah you can see that the uh, you can see a white border around it and then it takes a, a snapshot of the home screen or whatever screen you're on I guess which, which is really nice uh, so let's go ahead I think the most important and most, uh, most significant features of the TouchWiz is this new interface I keep getting this error about the battery dying so bear with me um, so you have this little arrow here so when you press this arrow, arrow the dock flips and you can see that we have a bunch of uh, new kind of uh, widgets that kind of run on top. They're not really widgets, they're kind of like full-blown apps, uh, but it's just a quick way to get to them, and they run on top of whatever you're running at the same time, or at, at that given time. So, for example, let's go ahead and launch, I don't know what works, and let's go to browser. I can't get the Wi-Fi to work. It's something about changing the, uh, the libs for it, the lib files. Uh, which is just like the library files and stuff. So, um, so now what you can see here is you can pick the calendar, and then the calendar will actually move or open right on top of the application that you're using. And what's nice about it is that you can actually drag it anywhere that you want on the screen. And say that you know you're looking, and instead of having to move it across or move it away till you can see, you can just tap the. You can just tap the background. And I don't know if it's not picking up on camera, but if you tap the background, it kind of fades away. Uh, so then you can actually maneuver and work, you know, use whatever is in the background, and then uh, just click, tap right back on it, and you can use it again. And, um, yeah, so here's, this is the, the calendar one. So let's go ahead and show you what else is here. So let's go ahead and click on button. We have, let's see, a mini pen. Um, it would be nice if you can run, you know, one or two at the same time, but uh, you can. You can only run one of these mini apps uh, at, at, at a time. So here, this one's for a drawing. You can scroll down and take some quick notes. Uh, you can even do text. Oops, no, that's not what I... You can do text input. And that works, and... Sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing. And this one is for, I guess, uh, erasing. So if you you were drawing, and then I guess you can erase. Yeah, so it works really well. I actually really like this idea um, that Samsung came up with. So let's see what else we have here. We have calendar uh, task manager. Now, uh, I know there's a lot of debate about if you should really be running a task manager or not. You know, personally, I, I don't think I run, I don't think I have one, but, you know, there's times that when an app gets stuck and just pressing the home button doesn't do anything and you need a quick way to kill that app. Um, and this is really a, a really cool way to do it. So you list your apps here. You got a RAM manager, too. I think you can tap on it. It shows you how much RAM you have. You can clear your memory. And you can also kill the active application, so we'll kill the browser. 
and you can see that task manager still is still running on there and you can of course just end all sorry about that annoying beep guys um, end all and there you go I have no tasks running uh, a few new things that also came up let's see go ahead and jump into the app drawer here there are a couple of new apps that I want to show you the first one is being a memo so let's go ahead and open up the memo app and we can just create a real quick memo and I think you can draw, no you can't draw on this one but you can type which is nice it's just a standard note at taking application uh, you know it looks like it's honeycomb optimized but uh, another thing, well a few problems with this build if you're attempting to install it yourself uh, you can't get, I can't get Wi-Fi to work, I can't get the rotation, the accelerometer is not is not working uh, so there's a lot of things that don't work on this and this is just a video to show you guys what we will eventually be getting I know that uh, uh, one of the developers on the Iconia is actually working on this as well so hopefully we can see that uh, coming out soon sorry this is such a rough take but um, another thing here is this you know messaging app obviously there's no you know 3G connectivity here you're not through our cellular you know connectivity so you're not even able to send text messages but it, you can see that it was two paneled and it was uh, honeycomb optimized but not really useful for us um, of course you get the Samsung standard apps like the music hub so let's see what happens when I press on that of course you get the standard disclaimer and we're going to say not, okay, network uh, connection error uh, but if you look up here real quickly you can see that it has like Feature, genre, playlist, pages, stuff like that. Um, let me get back in focus. And let's see what else do we have here. Of course, your standard apps like the navigation and file explorer and stuff like that. A photo editor actually comes built in. I'm actually a fan of Pixay. You can see, oh, this app is actually in landscape mode. That's why it actually flipped. Um, but you, I guess this is a picture that I selected here. And seems like it has a lot of different uh, features you can uh, the contrast, you can adjust the contrast and we'll see what we have I mean we have like crop if you want to crop it click done up here and let's see what else we have And I don't know what this is. Maybe just to resize it or something. It is. Yep, it's to resize it. And we'll click cancel. Cropping. We saw this. And a lot of different options here. Exposure, saturation, contrast, brightness. What is this? Different effects. Blur, less blur. I don't know how well that's picking up on the camera. But it's definitely blurring. Uh, I wish I had the charger for it, but I don't. Um... Let's see what else we have here. Oh, that was that. And then over here we have selection tools and whatnot. So uh, very looks like very. It has a lot of different uh, features on here. So um, it's really like a full-fledged photo editor. Something that you would probably find like on Pixay. Um, so no, I won't save this. And we can exit this application. And there we are back into portrait mode. Now, oh, well, this came up, so let's go ahead and talk about this real quickly. It's a little bit different than uh, the standard Honeycomb uh, user interface, again, obviously, but uh, you can see here that you have a few different options. You can, um, well, set up differently, really, so you can turn off the sound. Sorry, you can turn off the sound. You can uh, enable Bluetooth right from here. That wasn't an option before, I don't think. Um, GPS, you can enable it, from, enable it from right here. And, of course, you can go to your settings and whatnot. Um, so that kind of works. Works nicely. And let's see, of course you have Social Hub, uh, which I think aggregates all your different social networks and emails and stuff like that. Of course I don't have anything set up, so i um, set up later and see what happens. Okay, you have to set up for like the um, social networking services. Um, so let's see what accounts are supported at this time. Okay, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So if you guys use any of those, you should be you should be happy. And of course, you got email and Exchange up there too. So let's see what else I can show you guys. 
Um, the music app, I think it's just pretty standard music app, I guess. I mean, it's not as nice, I don't think, as the, um, as the Google one. And I don't know if it allows you to sync with, uh, Google Music. But it does work, and I'll play songs for you guys. Ah, this thing. And of course, and what's nice, so if you're, you know, anywhere within an application, press this button here. Come on. And music. And you have this uh, on screen app here to control your music. If you want to pause. I mean, it gives you really the basic stuff, but which is nice, I guess, which is nice is this here. We'll, we'll show you all your or all your music. Allow you to switch between them real quickly. Okay, so it's enough for Nicki Minaj. Let's go ahead and please don't thumb this down because I'm listening to a song. Okay, and of course there's so much to talk about. Okay, so well, we have this here now. These uh, custom uh, widgets for the for the Samsung UX, and this is not gonna work. Of course, I don't think it's going to work without internet. I don't know why the song just played again, started up again. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and see if there's any other widgets that are, that come built in that are different. Uh, buddies now, I don't know if that's, maybe that's something that do with Social Hub. Uh, maybe a couple more clocks, some gallery photos photos from the gallery. Um, active applications, I know this one was a popular one back with the uh, 7 inch Galaxy Tab. Let's see if there's anything else. Social Hub, yep, there's a Social Hub uh, widget. Yahoo Finance. So, a couple, a couple new widgets there. I can't believe these are resizable. So you get this all these also these uh, these dialogues here, and uh, what it is is that um, you can you have different emotions that you can do, and they will trigger different you know different com or different things. In this case, you can wave your tilt your um, wave your device left to right, and I guess it'll move to the next page or whatnot. With but with the accelerometer broken on this device, um, or just not working, it's I'm not gonna be able to test that. So, but that's really cool though that I mean that you can use the accelerometer to do different things. Unfortunately, I feel like the tablet. I mean, the tablet is heavier than the Galaxy Tab, so I don't know how willingly I would wanna like sit there and shake it just to get it to the next page. I might as well just flip the page. But I understand with the Galaxy Tab, since it's so 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 light, that it might be easy. Um, easier to do that, but yeah, I mean, you have your widgets here, resizable, this is running uh, Honeycomb 3.1, uh, let me go ahead and show you the settings page, because it's a little bit different, a little with more color, um, let's see here, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, if you just go to about tablet, you can see that it is running Android 3.1, and uh, again, this is the Vir Virtuous R Galaxy ROM that was running on the Acer Aconia. I mean, since the hardware is like almost the same, um, you know, it worked almost perfectly. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a couple more applications. Pen Memo. Uh, this is like just something I opened up so you can create a new memo. And this one you can actually write with. Works really nicely. You can save them. Um, nothing really too much to see here about that, but it works and it looks like it works really well. So this is really nice. I like to see these applications. I'm glad that is, um, Samsung actually added these custom apps. Uh, gives it a little, you know, gives it an edge uh, over you know the transformer now that it actually get the pl got to play with uh, the UX. So let's see here. I guess this is another thing where just, you know, you tilt it and you can see all your pictures. I'm not going to do that because I don't know what pictures I have on my thing, so, besides the hot Asian, but, um, but, you know, it's a photo gallery. Let's see what else it has here. Photo browser, oh, that was, that's just what I clicked on. And I think that's it. I feel like I'm missing something. 
but oh yes, the PDF reader. Um, you know, one of the biggest problems with the with Honeycomb just in general is it's really difficult to find a, a good PDF reader. And actually, uh, there's an application called eBooks on here that you know obviously you could use to read eBooks. But there's an option in the menu that you can uh, import a PDF file. So let's go ahead and go into my storage and I think it supports uh, .epub uh, too but I, I'm pretty sure I have like a couple PDFs like this is, I don't know if you guys know what mass spec is but I ran a mass spec on my compound oh it's the same one I opened um, and the pinching and zooming it feels really good very responsive. Uh, let me actually try to open up a something a little, uh, something with more text. So let's go ahead and import. Give me one second while I find it. it's going to be a, kind of a big file. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this will open. It's like a 300 megabyte file, so. Okay, this is a large PDF, like I said, three, about 300 megabytes, um, a lot of, lot of text, and, you know, uh, the best part is being able to just kind of swipe, you know, left and right, it's really hard to find an, a good app these days that will, that, I mean, for Honeycomb, that will work like this. Um, well, maybe this is not that good, but... I would say it's better than most, and I don't know if it does, like, it won't zoom to the column, but, you know, it works really well, and, uh, let's see if you have any other, like, options, okay, yeah, so you have, up here you have the search, bookmark, uh, I think, wow, you can even highlight, very cool, well, it didn't actually show up, but, I'm assuming that it's gonna add it eventually, maybe not. Um, you can draw on this. I mean, you have a couple of annotation um, features here, but I don't really want to mark up my book, so uh, get that. And then, of course, you know, like you can bookmark and whatnot. So basic features that um, that you would expect from from a good uh, PDF reader. And which is nice, this is where I really like it, like when I highlight something, then you can click on highlights and it'll show you all the things that you've highlighted. In this case, I don't have anything. Um, but yeah, that's the last thing I, I wanted to show you guys. Um, again, this is a Samsung TouchWiz UX running on the Asus ePad Transformer. Uh, I'm going to provide a link at the bottom. Someone said that, uh, that they're working on a port, a full working port for the Asus Transformer. But I guess you guys got a, a sneak peek of what to expect. Uh, be sure to check out my website, asustransform.com, and our forms, asustransform.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.